Okay, so if you couldn't tell by the title of this video, this is a uh, Cold Steel Cheap Shot Crossbow. I can say a Cheap Shot 130. I don't think that really means anything, but I mean, it separates from the Cheap Shot Crossbow bolts, not bolts, but uh, arrowheads, I mean, which I hear aren't that great because they're plastic. That's actually not relevant to anything, but uh, also you can tell from the video, I am putting a magazine on this, similar to the uh, Cold Steel Adder, or not the Cold Steel, the uh, RX Adders. Uh, I think, I don't know the actual company, I know the website's Go Gun. I, I don't know if that's the actual company name or not, but I'm pretty sure uh, Jorg Sprav, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, or the Slingshot Channel, as a lot of us probably know it. I'm pretty sure he designed them and builds them and makes all kinds of cool stuff with them, not gonna lie, I think they're really cool. And I've wanted one for a while, but uh, they're kind of expensive. So, you know, I decided I was gonna build one myself. Also, I've spent the last several years dedicating a YouTube channel to building weapons, so why not? Uh, you could get the actual one, I think they're about $500 or $550 or something, which is quite a bit, considering this crossbow is, I think like $250 is what I paid for it. I bought it like a year ago. But uh, it's actually a fun crossbow. Uh, it's a lot easier to use than my full-size hunting crossbow just because it has a lever system to it and my hunting crossbow you have the strings and pulleys and it's it's a thing but uh, yeah basically gonna put a magazine on this uh, also have another mod that will probably be done in a different video that uh, hopefully be a surprise and hopefully I can uh, have it in the end of this of me using it just because I think it's gonna be cool so also kind of put a bayonet on it I think that'd be pretty sweet I don't know whether I just want something to strap on or some sort of like pre-attached one like an SKS bayonet, but I don't know. I'm kind of getting ahead of myself there anyway. Um, basic plan is, of course, I have to tear it apart a little bit. I have to cut off uh, like this part here so that way the bolts can slide on and I'll have to strap the uh, magazine onto this. I'll have to attach something up here to make sure it slides like it's supposed to and doesn't wander off onto either side. Um, I will have to say, since I am cutting down and strapping stuff onto this crossbow, even if the like little adder or magazine or whatever you want to call it is removable, you're going to be destroying any warranty this thing has because I need to cut off this, chop that down, and, well, there's no replaceable parts. So, honestly, I'd probably just recommend buying one. It's probably the better option, but, again, I like building my own stuff. So, I think I'm going to start with uh, tearing it apart and, uh, uh, Cutting this down and also removing the automatic safety. I, I know uh, George Brav has a whole video on how to do a lot of this stuff, so I'll probably just skim over it. I would recommend watching his stuff, but chances are if you're watching this, you've probably already seen his stuff anyway. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna start by just seeing what I can tear apart on this. i have not certain what all it's gonna take, but I know some of it, these just has pins, and then just start removing screws until something comes off. That's usually how I tear things apart at my job, so I could be any different here. So, uh, got a little bit of work done on it. This was surprisingly more solid than I thought it was going to be. I expected, you know, a little bit of metal and then just cheap plastic. Even this turned out is actually metal. 
I guess. But now that's just a manual safety, which is very handy because as much as I usually never use safeties, they are kind of nice to have every once in a while. But now again, it works like it should, but won't automatically engage. That is something I very much hate in crossbows. I mean, I get the point, but you know, with the self-loading thing, an automatic safety is just gonna get in the way. But I re would really hate a crossbow going off on my hand, which, yeah, I've never actually had happen, even though I've had a few close calls with some of my homemade stuff. Although, with my like big compound crossbow, I do really see why that's a bigger issue, because I'm pretty sure it would take off your hand. But anyway, this is not that, and it will have a magazine on top of it anyway. But uh, as you see, I, I didn't film it, but I also just cut off this little uh, thing here, which has the rails. And what is supposed to be a sight, I mean, it kind of has the fake holographic sight there, or I think it's called holographic sight. There's, I think it's supposed to glow, but in many cases, they use clear plastic. I've seen guns do the same thing. I mean, it is actually quite handy. You know, those dots help you line up a shot, as I found, but uh, yeah. That's actually not relevant to anything. I don't know why I'm talking about that. But I did put it back together. Really simple. These were harder to remove than I thought, but they had Loctite on them, as you can see, so they stick. I've never actually torn apart anything with Loctite that wasn't recent, so that was kind of interesting. But basically what I'm going to do now is I have to build the magazine for it, which I'm not going to do at this very moment, but I mean, I'm just doing this after work, so it's kind of late. But I also, uh, I was going to go ahead and cut this part off. But, the way I built the magazine, it might fit over this. So I might just extend the magazine over onto this and use this to kind of help keep everything in line. Maybe. I'm just kind of uh, making this up as I go. You would not believe how often I do that. But, uh, yeah. So after this next clip, I'm going to start getting materials and building the magazine. Okay, so I did a bit of work off camera because that's kind of what you have to do sometimes. And uh, I ended up, I needed a screw to hold everything onto my main uh, trigger pack. So I was looking at the hardware store, I was trying to find one of the sizes of drill bit I used, and I couldn't find any. They were all either tiny or just really thin and almost looked like needles. So I'm like, yeah, those aren't gonna work. So I got another size, I thought it was gonna be a little too big, but you know, hey, I'll drill it out. You know, I already chopped off the end of it, so what's making a hole a little bigger. So I ended up just seeing how much I had to drill out. So I had to stick it in and uh, by complete accident, I got the same size of screw that was already in there, which I figured they had some custom ones. I didn't figure they'd use, you know, so I get the hardware store. So I ended up just, you know, getting the right thing. Drilled out these holes a little bit bigger, but you know, that works. So this is the line. This is basically the front of the trigger pack would sit. And then this goes around the trigger pack. So that way you cut out this piece here, which fits there. I had to file it a little bit, that's why I didn't film it. And you know, basically it's just me cutting and filing plywood, it's very boring. So my basic strategy is, and I'm gonna have to glue this in several different groups because, uh, well, I have to not only have uh, wood glue dry, but then I have to, you know, glue everything else together, which I'm gonna use JB Weld for. It's what I used for my smaller pistol crossbow, and it went fairly well, so that's what I'm gonna stick with. But my basic thing is this is the center piece that sits over that, same thickness. I don't know exactly, probably should have measured it. But it's, I actually got this from uh, my anvil, as the pallet that it came on. But I also have these other two pieces, which I think are, it's probably what, an eighth? That fit there. Then I have, this will fit sandwiched on roughly there. Got to do some filing stuff to get it to fit like it's supposed to. And this will fit right there. And that, 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 sorry if I can keep it on. That'll make it to where this fits the bolt anyway. Slides right in there and can't move side to side. I was originally planning to make this double stack. I mean, seeing the slingshot channel or door sprob, I really hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. If not, and you're watching this, I'm sorry. Uh, but I was originally going to make a double stack because that's really cool. But I kind of figured out it's going to be really complicated to do. And I just looking at it and it would be easier to build a single stack and either modify it to be double stack like he did with his. Or to use what I learned from this to build a double stack later. Either way, single stack is going to work pretty well. So I end up this is a, this is a scrap piece because I got the wrong piece. 
But anyway, then this will just have stuff sandwiched on either side. And hopefully with this gap cut, it'll fit on here a lot easier and won't move too much, I hope. And then of course I also have to build another space here that holds the kind of arm that pushes down as well as uh, I'm gonna put a rail in the front as well. I was kind of looking at it and almost everyone I seen, they always put some sort of like just red dot in the back, which is fine. I actually probably will do the same. And I'll probably do it up for this that I also use for other things. But uh, I was also thinking of looking at his apocalypse adder that he made, which is really cool. The bayonet was a little iffy. I think it'd be cool if it made like a folding bayonet, like an SKS, but that's just a personal preference. I, I don't know he's in Germany. I don't know the legality of bayonets there. They're actually kind of shaky here too, but that's not important. My uh, main thing with that was, uh, then I did the double stack, but he also had like his own iron sights on it that he built. And that was pretty cool. But then I thought, why don't I just get like flip up AR iron sights instead of trying to make my own. And so that might be what I do if I can find cheap ones. You know, I once looked for cheap airsoft or paintball parts for that. And uh, yeah, it was actually cheaper to buy actual AR-15 parts than that. Fun little side tangent, but uh, this video's gonna be long if I keep talking. So I'm just gonna go ahead and just uh, use some Gorilla Glue to glue these together. And I'll get back to you when I'm done with that. Okay, so I do want to apologize for uh, not filming as much as I'd wanted to and mostly just explaining what I've been doing and what I'm going to do. This has uh, so far been a kind of a longer process than I wanted it to be. But you know, trying to get everything right, that's gonna happen. So I have everything here glued together. As you can see, a little more gaps than I want to, but it is plywood. I did have to sand everything to make sure everything fit, and that was a mess. But now, as you can see, that now slides in perfectly. I also removed the front sight, not really gonna need it, so I took it off. Basically, this whole thing, I have everything stacked up here, of course. I uh, don't know how I'm going to correct that. That should be done once everything's... Okay, never mind. Uh, so, now what I really have to do is make the front piece here, and then, of course, the arm to push everything down. So, the front piece, again, already cut. I do apologize. Basically, just two, two square... They're not really square, more rectangle pieces. And... Uh, this piece thingy here. Basically, these are all gonna stack up, this one in the middle. My arms, which I've also cut, this is just the same with aluminum as here. I have two of them that I'm gonna glue together and then kinda fix them the shape. Gonna sand a little notch here so that way the string won't go back when it's all the way empty, just so I don't dry fire it. But it's, they're gonna fit in this gap and then have a spring to uh, kinda pull them down, which I need to make. Anyway, then have this one stacked on top. And it's basically it for that, really. Pretty simple, hopefully. I don't want to make it too complicated. And they will sit up here. There's like a 10 inch gap between the front here and this back. The bolts are gonna be seven and a half inches, what they're measured out to be. I'm gonna cut these to there, and if you were going just buy the bolts online, that's what they are. Which, it took me a long time to figure out because I wasn't 100% certain, but that is just the shaft length. It doesn't include the little uh, knock here, or the bolt and its attachments, or not the bolt, the arrowhead and its attachments, which for most arrows or crossbow bolts, it's fairly small, especially for this part back here, but this is, you know, I think a little over a half inch, so it's not just a little bit. Either way, still, this is gonna be 10 inches. A little longer it probably needs to be, but I wanna be able to put broadheads and stuff in it, and they sit out a little longer. So I'm gonna go ahead and basically glue those together then JB weld these pieces together so that way they're uh, solid and get back to you once all the glue. Okay, goes. so after a bit of gluing and needing more gluing and a bunch of measuring and cutting and sanding and it's it's been an interesting 20 minutes. Oh, though last time you saw was like what 16 hours ago. I don't know, long process. Anyway, so I chopped down one of the bolts. This is about what they look like. Hopefully the ones I ordered will be here soon so I don't have to, well I will chop them down because might as well, crossbow's already ruined. But they fit in pretty well. Of course with space for the broad head there. I also cut out these little pieces that will go on the sides here to keep the bolt centered as they go down. And so that way, uh, you know, things stay straight. Yeah, I really should plan these out better. 
I also left some space here so I can use broadheads, of course. That's why, uh, slide that back. We've got plenty of space here for, you know, broadheads. Because, let's be honest, these field tips aren't very effective against much. Beyond targets. Uh, by the way, this needs just held by a clamp. I removed that, the whole thing falls apart. So what I'm gonna do now is mix up a bunch of JB Weld, glue these two pieces on, probably let that sit for a second, then glue the back and the front on, so that way it's all one solid piece, and then work on the arm, which I basically decided to scrap the aluminum pieces and make it out of plywood, because that aluminum is not going well. And it's expensive to buy them on the actual thickness, so fuck it, that's what I'm doing. Uh, so yeah, just gonna glue it in place, of course, I'll have to drill a hole here for my uh, the pin for that to pivot. Figure out a spring system. Still working on that. My original plan isn't going to work quite like I wanted it to. So I might make something external to go on, or I don't know. I'm still working on that. Also, there's not enough space here to probably put a flip up sight like I wanted to. I might still try and attach some sort of like AR style sight, but I uh, will go with that. You know, get that when I get to it. Not gonna lie, I'm not a fan of ARs. I prefer AKs, fight me. But uh, yeah, that might be what I use just to get a hold of them. But we'll uh, cross that bridge when I get everything glued Okay, together. so a lot's happened since the last clip that you literally just saw. And I've reached a point of, uh, I'm just really hoping this works. <laughs> it's uh, been an interesting couple of days. Mostly of me just staring at this and drinking coffee, trying to figure out what the hell I'm gonna do. It's, uh, yeah, it happens. Especially when I only sort of know what I'm doing anyway, which, uh, you know, if you know me, is a pretty common theme. Anyway, so mainly I've got everything glued together. I end up having to file these down a little bit because the bolts, they would fit in, but they would kind of twist at the bottom or having trouble. They're just kind of sitting here at the moment. So that was kind of an issue. Uh, so yeah, I got filed in the fit. I also got my actual uh, bolts. And these are the ones I cut down. These are the ones I bought, and uh, yeah, there's a slight size difference. I measured them for this, so these bolts are, uh, if I can get it in properly, just slightly too short to where I really can't put broadheads or anything on them. I mean, I could file that down if I wanted to, but I don't know. I, I doubt I'd actually be hunting with this or even using it for like defense or anything like that because I live in America and have a 357 Magnum, but uh, that, that's sort of a joke. I don't know. Anyway, I've had way too much coffee. So I've also added, as you can see me, you know, fiddling with it, this arm here. This is basically gonna, you know, feed everything down. Uh, at the moment, it's just held in by a, you know, quarter inch bolt, as well as this is just kind of temporarily held in place. You know, make sure everything stays temporary until you actually know what you're doing. So it's basically, you know, just cut from plywood. It's kind of got a little kind of L shape there. I'm gonna put some sort of like tab on the side here where I just, you know, flip it and hold it open. Cause I'll have springs here, pulling it down. So that way, you know, it pushes all the way down and then hopefully feeds. Also kind of has this little hook at the bottom here to where that catches the string, I hope. But uh, you know, we'll see how that goes. I'll probably tell you in the next clip, which might be filmed two to three days or weeks after me doing this one, because you know, eh, I really should have figured out what I was doing before I started. But then again, that'll require planning, and I'm bad at that. So, if you don't see, I have these little tabs here. They're still wet with JB Weld. Um, not, wet's not really the right word, it's JB Weld. It's yet the setup, but they're there. And it's because, uh, I didn't think about it, but when this is pulled, when the string's pulled tight on this, the little uh, trigger pack here is pulled just slightly down, which, with the regular design, isn't an issue, but with something this long, this was pressing up against here and was causing issues. So those will keep it, you know, pushed up, hopefully. And if it has a tendency to rock from side to side, I'm gonna put a little tabs here to keep it from doing that. But uh, I don't think that's gonna be an issue considering how tight it is. Like I can move it up and down a little bit, but it doesn't move side to side at all. So, uh, yeah, I will probably start putting the springs on and get back to you when I'm done with okay, that. Okay, so I have everything together. This is now spring loaded as it should. The, these pieces here, keep it in place as it should, and everything works. Thank God. This was about a week of mostly staring at this, and uh, not gonna lie, I was starting to get a little skeptical towards the end of how it's gonna work. But it does, 
I managed to get to feed six rounds through it. I haven't actually tested it yet, as in I haven't went out to my backyard with a target or front yard to show dominance over the neighbors. But uh, I was just basically, uh, I would rack it back, let one fall into place, and I just let the lever slide forward. And then I would just pull the trigger and slide it back, which would essentially simulate firing without actually shooting a bolt in my house, which uh, I don't have a target in here to shoot at. I don't know if I can hit it at the moment. I have had way too much coffee. It's, it's been a long day. So uh, as far as I know it works, I just have to uh, just shoot it and make sure everything functions like I want it to. But uh, this is, yeah, pretty much it for the build. I'm sorry it wasn't more detailed. I was more just filming after I did something. But I would, you'd probably just hear me screaming at this repeatedly if I tried filming everything. And, uh, yeah, it's not as good as I wanted to. Like I said, I wanted to originally do a double stack, but that didn't happen. I also think I need to do something a little here so that way the fins are go straight in instead of, you know, moving around. I don't know if I'll do that or not, but it might help some of my issues if I do it. That I don't know. Again, I'm not an expert, but I might show that if I don't. <clears throat> anyway, I still have a little bit of fine-tuning to do. The safety still... I don't know if you can really see in there. I am filming on my phone and the lighting is terrible. Yeah, you really can't see, but there's a little bit of a, there's still a little bit of a burr there to where when it goes in, when the string hits it, it still kicks it in the safe, which I don't want to do. Uh, also, there's a little burr on the bottom of one of these that catches the string. And I do definitely do not want that while shooting. So I'm gonna you know, do a little bit of fine tuning. Of course, sand this down, put some railing up here. This, of course, doesn't actually go all the way forward, so I can put some sort of sight up front, so I will definitely probably do that eventually. Maybe not in this video, but I'm not done with this, of course. I have at least one more video after this that I want to do. Hopefully, I'm not promising anything. And then just a bunch of small stuff that'll probably just show off. I want to put a bayonet on it because I think that'd be cool. I have an idea for that. Not going to be something small, spike, or I want like a big blade just because... You know, it's a crossbow. They're not really meant for bayonets, so might as well make it big and bulky and whatever. <clears throat> I also want to make a small thing for my the stock that actually where it holds onto your shoulder, that kind of like C shape that uh, York's Brav had, which I think is about the best way to go because honestly, this thing you have to like kind of pull it close to you and then just kind of rack it, which for what I want to do is going to be a little inconvenient. So I'll probably end up building one of those, but I don't know if you'll see that in this video, but. If I do make the second video of these like I want to, you definitely see it in that. So uh, I'm going to go and do some fine tuning of this just to make it what I want to give it a paint job. Paint this whole thing so it's not this, uh, I don't want to say ugly green, but it's just this kind of, I don't know, off army green color. Which is fine for what it is, but I definitely want it to be something different. So uh, yeah, I'm going to go do that and get back to you.